Garrett Thomas, GC contender, Spring Classics rider, or T tier. Here we go, here's my comparison. So we have some great results from him. So he, here's E3 Howard back on the Eau de Quermont. He's uh, came, had a good result here. He's also come top top five in Flanders before and um, top ten in Paris-Roubaix as well. So he has some real cla real quality classics results. So here's E3 Howard back up the Eau de Quermont, 39k to go. So we have this climb and then we have another climb later on. And then that's it, it's relatively flat, the finale of the uh, E3 Howard Rebecca. So you can see Garrett Thomas is on the front, Zenex T-Bar is there, Bonin's there, Sagan's there, they're all there. So we've got one rider up the front who's uh, got 20 seconds advantage. He was in the early break, there's on Wandy Man. <laughs> You'll see him the whole time, the classics, I always point him out if I see him. He's such a good bloke. So Garrett Thomas now goes on the attack, Stibar's straight on his wheel. This is the Quermont where it's the slightly steeper part um, before it flattens off into the village, where then it's pretty much flat. So Garrett Thomas is really revving up, it's probably about 9-10% here. He is really flying. You can see he's really suited these strong, punchy efforts. He used to be a good uh, pursuiter back in the day, so these are pretty similar efforts to pursuiting. Um, and he really is quite light as well compared to a lot of Spring Classics riders. Um, he's more like a queer Kwaski, uh, less of a sprinter, but more of a uh, climber. And Stibar's on his wheel. Sagan is struggling to hold it. And you can see that's the pub on the left. Now they're in the village, and they are flying along. He's got a bit of a gap, but it's not really big enough at the moment. And Sagan's now decided this is trouble, right? Let's time to get across. So now, probably in the big ring, going 35, 35 k's an hour, I'd say on the cobbles, they've smoothed out a little bit. And he's really, Garrett Thomas, I think a lot of people say he really suits the spring classics just because of that punch, the ability to climb, and just he just always looks really aggressive and dominant. In the like Grand Tours GC wise, he's always done well. He's won the Vuelta um, at Algarve twice, and he's won Paris Nice, but. People always, there's always question marks about him because he's always had a crash or whatever. But I think the Spring Classics, that's why I really, I really like watching him. But um, I always like watching him in the Grand Tours, to be honest. But you can see the selection's been made. Stibar, Cyclocross Specialist, Sagan, Classics God, and Garrett Thomas. So Garrett Thomas really was one of the best Classics riders. So here we go. It's in the open field now. It's um, it's getting the fast things you'll see there in the big wing. Big ring, you can see it's not really much of a climb anymore. It's the cobbles that are more of the problem. He's got that bike handling skills. Uh, even though people say he doesn't, he definitely can control his bike well. Um, he's had some unfortunate crashes this year. But Sagan's getting a little bit gap there, actually. But they are flying along. This this IAM guy has no chance of staying on the wheel, let's be honest. So the people below, like behind, are like Greg Van Avermaet, etc. Bonin, I guess. They're all struggling. But Garrett Thomas, Set Van Mark is there. Um, I think that's Stein Vandenberg. Absolutely monstrous bloke. So you can see they're getting to the top of the Quermont here. Garrett Thomas is looking strong, struggling a little bit, but not looking too bad. Sagan's coming around. Set Van Mark is trying to get across. You can see Garrett Thomas well, did a lot more Spring Classics training and was really, really strong. That was when it has him, Bro, and um, Stanard, who really were the powerhouse for Sky. Now it's changed a bit. Uh, but they round the top of the corner and they get onto the sort of motorway. It's not really a motorway, it's more just a big road. Um, it's quite a fast main road. Um, and anyway, we skip ahead. So they managed to stay stay away f basically for 4K, got a massive advantage. And Garrett Thomas basically went to the back after his turn, just looked at the little gap to the right and just has gone. Sagan's flicking his elbow and Stiebo attacks right round him, which is the best thing for Garrett Thomas because that means that every single one of them is doing the same effort. So Garrett Thomas is maybe doing 450. Stiebo's trying to do maybe 500 to get across. So Gans trying to do 450 as well. If they were together, then they could have just teamed up. But luckily for him, Garrett Thomas managed to take the win and just take it all the way to the line. They weren't really close to him at all. He had a big advantage and he took a big win. Then on the following day... Again, well again, or maybe it's two days. You can see 68k to go. Stein Stein Vandenberg is on the front, drilling it. He's one of the biggest blokes in pro cycling. I think that's Greggy. My boy Greggy's on the back, trying to cop across. Set Van Marker's there. Another bloke's there. They're all trying to attack. Garrett Thomas is coming across. So you can see Garrett Thomas is good on the flats, but he's all, um on the climb. Sorry, but he's also a very very strong time trialist and has won a lot of races or got, getting a lot of GC times with his time trialing ability. Even this year's Giro, he came second uh, to Tom de Moulin after having that horrific crash, which just shows you how, how much of a strong time trialist Garrett Thomas is. So you can see Vandenberg's, Vandenberg's on the front, drilling it, and Garrett Thomas looks like he's just made it across. 
Um, this is a really big move. It was very windy, and Garrett Thomas did actually get blown off his bike in this today, on that day. Sorry, not today. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a solid ride from him. And then we zoom to the end. They say it away, and Luca Paolini attacks. Garrett Thomas follows. So Garrett Thomas was doing a lot of work before, and I think he was he was wary that he was doing a bit too much work. So he he left it, and then Paoli, Paolini. Uh, is a cunning rider and just hits again. He slowly revs it up. He doesn't get out of the saddle. He just sort of has a very low saddle position, a bit like Pots of Evo, and he just sort of goes, and people are like, all right, now he's putting the watts down. But he didn't He didn't suddenly snap up to 1,000 watts. He sort of just gradually moved it up in the saddle, which is a very sneaky way of doing it. Garrett Thomas is on the front, flicks his elbow out, and everyone's just like, nah, can't be bothered, mate. Terpster is there. Unfortunately, Terpster was just didn't want to work or anything, and finding out didn't. Paulini held it, but Garrett Thomas did well. He got managed to get away with uh, Terpstra, and they had a sprint out for the final. And you can see he's not the fastest rider. Like Nicky Terpstra doesn't have much of a snap, to be honest. But I think maybe he was a bit fresher than Garrett Thomas. But Garrett Thomas is not the more of a pure sprinter. He's more of a pure climber, to be honest. Because that was some good results from Garrett Thomas in the Spring Classic. So now we zoom to 2017, where he's now... Uh, he's now a Grand Tour contender, and you can see Landers on the front now, Landers attacking, trying to um, help Garrett Thomas out, because they're both going for the Giro, so they're doing a bit of 1-2 practice before the Giro, this is the Tour of Alps, so it's basically Giro del Trentino, uh, they rebadged it, but you probably know it from Giro del Trentino, and it's basically the warm-up race, it's a bit similar to the Dauphiné for the Tour de France, so you can see now Garrett Thomas has attacked, he's gone up to Lander, Lando is with Pots of Evo, and you can see what he attacked really hard. It was like a spring classic sort of attack, just very hard. I mean, the gradient is quite shallow. I'd say it's about 5 6% maybe, so that does should suit Garrett Thomas more than the steep stuff because obviously he's a heavier rider and he's good at time trialist. So he manages time trial up to um, Domenico Pots of Evo and Mika Lander. And you can see Pots of Evo is now 2 on 1, and um, Garrett Thomas. He's technically the leader of this race, even though Lander's the defending champion, but he managed to stay pretty calm. He, Garen Thomas always looks like he's just not putting any effort in when you go from behind. It's like that calf is just like, I don't know, there's something about it. it makes him look like he does, does no effort. Now he's rounded the corner, and this is the last steep. We're inside the kilometre to go. It's basically a steep pitch to the final, where Pots of Evo, the 55 kilo rider, should definitely have the advantage. But Garen Thomas is on the front, absolutely drilling it. You can see Lander's trying to get on his wheel. Um, Pots of Evo is just struggling. I don't know what he's doing. He does this weird out of the saddle technique. But Garrett Thomas is sort of powering up. This is the Spring Classic, sort of 500, 600 watts up here, really going for it. And this is where the Spring Classics training helps him quite a lot because he still have that engine. Even though he probably hasn't done as many short, punchy efforts, he'll still have that um, in him. And then Lander managed to get on his wheel and basically says, I could have won that stage, lads. Um, so, yeah, it was a solid ride by Garrett Thomas there. And a big, big result for him. It wasn't as big as Paris Nice the year before, but I think he was. It was pretty confident going into the Giro. Fortunately for the Giro, obviously he had that crash. Then he had came second, and then he ended up quitting. But anyway, Garrett Thomas then went to the Tour de France and won the opening uh, prologue, which I think really does suit him. He's used to riding the wet from because he's from Wales. He's also used to doing these short efforts, similar to. Obviously, they're shorter than um, a time, uh, like a, an hour-long time trial, but they're and they're longer than the pursuit. But they probably do sort of suit him. He's probably very strong at the twenty-minute power test. He's good at accelerating out of the corners. Here's just some footage from highlights. So there's Valverde crashing or whatever. But it was a really solid ride from him. He beat Tony Martin, who was really the favourite. Tony Martin was, I mean, this is his race. I mean, they literally made the prologue for him to get the yellow jersey. Even Froome Daug couldn't beat him. So Garrett Thomas had a real st solid day there. Got the yellow jersey. So time to give my conclusion. What do I think of this? Do I think Garrett Thomas is better as a, GT, a, G, a GC contender or a Spring Classics? I like to see Garrett Thomas go back to the Spring Classics for me. I think it's nice to see him as a as a Grand Tour contender, but I think he's left it too late. He hasn't got a good result yet. He's got top 15 in the Tour de France twice, but I think really he should go back to the Spring Classics. He, Him, Moscon, Rowe, Stannard, they could be a real solid Classics unit. So if I was him... I'd maybe still race the one-week stage races, but I'd get back to the Spring Classics. That's where you begin. Start attacking. You'd get, you'd get him and maybe even Quick Koski joining you. Maybe do some of the later um, Flesh Wallone, etc. I think that would be really really exciting for me, and I'd love to see Garrett Thomas get back into the Spring Classics. What do you think? He's doing Paris Bay this year and the Tour de France. Should he only concentrate on the Spring Classics? Should he go full GC contender? Cheers for watching. Leave your comments in the description. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you next time.